But these are very tiny, small items, and they're worth some very good money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about some collectible items that I run into. They're tiny, they're small, but yet they are worth a lot of money. Now we're going to show you a few items here. Business cards is one area that I always mess with. Business cards in general can sell for some very good money. This one is from 1943 and it's from the territory of Hawaii. Very nice card. Stuff like this that say TH on it, Territory of Hawaii, are usually worth some decent money. This business card should get me 30 plus bucks. Other items I run into are like ID cards, passes, military passes like this one here. It's got some curfew information. Now the family I bought this from, their great grandfather was in a bomber squadron. I picked up a whole slew of photos, patches, military apparel of all sorts including a ton of paper some v-mail love letters all that sort of thing all of that carries some very good value uh, like these cards these passes these headquarter passes with curfew hours on them i've gotten 50 to 75 bucks for some this is from territory of hawaii this should do extremely well now the best things and they're the smallest things that i always get a lot of money for are called chits C-H-I-T. And basically what a chit is, this is one right here, it's basically a coupon for either some money or something like that that you can exchange at a military base store or PX or something like that. There's other places that they would have been accepted, but chits in general can sell for hundreds of dollars. I've seen some of these from a China, U.S. China base with an APO address in China that have sold for, ah, oh, geez, almost a thousand bucks in some cases. It just depends on where it's from, how old it is. Chits have been around for a very long time. Again, it's C-H-I-T-S, Chits. Here's another one. This one's from a specific, the Fair Price Grill. This was on a base overseas, and this is good for, as you see, one drink. This would have been handed out to soldiers, sailors, the whole works to get them into their establishment. Things like this can go for 20 or 30 bucks. This one here, price-wise, because it's, again, from the territory of Hawaii, it's one that I haven't seen uh, from before, probably around 50 to 75 bucks as well. It's an average on some of these sorts of chits. They're extremely expensive. They sell extremely well. It's something I look for all the time, and most people miss these. Might be in a display case might just be sitting in a whole bunch of paper stuff and this one tiny little piece here could get you 50 bucks now price into these just these few items i'm showing you i got a whole bunch and i mean hundreds i don't even have a penny into each one of these when i break it down across the board i bought out pretty much everything the family had that was willing to be let go um that's usually a good place to find stuff brought backs bring backs from u.s soldiers overseas during world war one world war two or even going back to spanish american war a lot of those items can be worth a small fortune let's look at just a few chits just to give you an idea on the value in some of these if you don't know about them you'll be missing a huge area most other people who don't see this video probably will never know what a chit is so you'll be up above most of the other ones, and you'll be able to score out on stuff like this. Now, we're looking in Terapeak on eBay, and we've just typed in chit. That's all I've typed in, C-H-I-T. Now, there's other chits besides the kind I just showed you. Now, there's what's called a blood chit. And what that basically is, if you were shot down during, say, World War II, and chits go way back, it basically said in Chinese or another language that you're a U.S. soldier and basically told them to help. They're there to help you. Please help them. There'll be a reward paid, say, if you are a pilot that was shot down. So you'll see a patch with, like, the CBI or Chinese flag on it. That uh, And CBI is China, Burma, and India. That's what a CBI service would be. You'd be serving in that theater. You'd be either in China, Burma, or India. That's what the CBI is. So a lot of times you'll see CBI tied with blood shits. Back in those days, China was our friend. We had a base over there, well, a couple. 
Flying Tigers flew out of China, if you don't know. General Chenault uh, was in charge of the Flying Tigers. There's actually a stamp with him on it, but you'll see some of these chits. Again, you see the Chinese flag. We're not going to go into great detail on these because we're really looking at the other type of chits to say, but you'll see these sewn on to uh, flyers, bomber jackets, and things like that, too. Now, again, I got this from a flyer, a bomber squadron, and I do have a chit, a blood chit as well that I got with it. I even have personal items such as his hat. Now, we may go into the hat specifically because it's a very specific type of hat a pilot would have worn or a crew member of a bomber back then, and we may discuss that in another video, but the chits we're talking about are like these here. Some of them came in books. Most of the military chits like this are for the military canteen, the PX, the store on the base. That's usually what they are for. Some of them were issued by the government, obviously. So, And you can see here's one from the Netherland Indies and canteen indonesia area it's a booklet and that's what you'll see you might see like 20 little coupons 10 little coupons five little coupons you may even find the booklet with no actual chits inside but even that booklet could be worth some money this is one with just basically a small one a little bigger than what i had but it's a little tablet that's been stapled together it went for almost nine hundred dollars as i said these little paper ones can go in the thousand dollar range if you find the right one you'll see the prices on some of the paper ones if you slide down through here's another one a confederate sutler chit script and it's basically like a script like a military script it's like a pay voucher so you can take it to a store and swap it out for something now this one again a little small piece of paper four hundred dollars so even the little ones that i found could be worth a hundred bucks or two three four hundred bucks because again they fall into those price ranges all the time now Again, you're going to have to slide through here. You're going to have to take a look. Here's another Confederate one. This one went for $360. they are all not super, super valuable, but most military chits from World War II or before are worth at least $10, $15, $20. Bucks. It's the type of item you list. You put a set price on it. You just leave it, and it will sell. It may take a little bit, a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, but that's usually about it for any of these items. Now, counting them all together, there's 4,400 of them that have sold in the last year. Now, that's not a huge amount. This is a smaller niche area, but the reason it's so small, it's such a niche, is because most people don't know at all what a chit is. Most people have no clue. It's just a five-cent little piece of paper, and to them, it's not worth anything. They just didn't put the word chit in the title because they probably didn't know. Maybe a third of what's sold isn't going to show up on here again because people don't know that term. Now, we're in the ended sold listings here. We're not going through Terapeak, just to give you an idea on the recent ones. You're going to see the patches, again, CBI, China, Burma, India Theater. That means, again, that's where these soldiers were. Most all of them are going to be tied to a pilot. Again, because it was to let the indigenous people know in their own language that, hey, this guy's here to help you. Please help him and we'll give you a good reward. U.S. government would offer money or whatever they did at the time. Again, depending on the situation, the country of origin and the whole works. Now, here's the same Confederate one we looked at before. But if you, again, slide down through here, you're going to see some other ones. The other Confederate one. Now, here's another one, United States Forces in the Philippines. Now, this could go back to the Spanish-American War. I don't know on the age in this specific one. Now, there is a book for some of these. There are some price guides that cover many of these because most all of them were issued through the U.S. government, if they're a U.S. chit, and the government issued them from certain specific places. This wasn't something you would just give out to everybody and anybody could have them. So, in some cases, they were accounted for. They weren't valid unless someone wrote numbers on them or signed them off or initialed them. So there's other reasons as well. These could be found in many different places. Now, the best place to find them are like an antique flea market, antique mall. Um, a state sale is awesome for these, especially ones where a family member was in the military. That's where a large chunk comes from. Now, I have pickers, so I have a little different sourcing venue than some of you. But even at a garage sale, you can turn these up. I've even found some at a Savers before they closed down years back around here in a book shoved in there, bunches of them. So most of the time, it's going to be in collectibles. Now, there are some that show up in like coins and monies. Because there's a U.S. military payment certificate section in there. These are also considered paper tokens. So in some cases, you can find them in paper tokens. You can also find them in obsolete currency because technically they're obsolete currency. They were used to exchange for food, services, or whatever, which is basically money. It had a value on them. 
Now, looking under military payment certificates, as I said, a lot of these will show up in this area. Now, prisoner of war, you will run into those here in this country. Those are usually worth very, very good money. They're all not going to say prisoner of war in them at all. You, you may not even see that listed. It's just going to be a given. So these are worth some pretty decent money, over $67. Here's one from Brisbane, Australia. It's for a specific place. I found them for movie tickets. I found them for theater, bars, uh, the PX, um, you know, all of those sorts of things. The military canteens would have taken them to. Some of the USO facilities would have taken them. Another POW. Prisoners of war were all over this country, if you didn't know that, during World War II. And even in World War I, from what I see, so again, they're all valuable. They all have some sort of cross tie-in. Most of them are military. The earlier, not necessarily always the most valuable, but that's usually the case that I find. So you will find them mixed up in other areas. So just because you only see a certain amount in one category doesn't mean there's many more up. And as I said, you might see them marked as coupons, 5 cent coupon, 10 cent coupon, 6p for pence or something like that coupon. So there's many different ways they could be put in here. If you don't know that that's what they're called or you don't have the book, you won't know what it shit is even, even if you find one of these. Now here's just one more category to give you another idea. This is tokens, U.S. trade tokens. Some of the chits would be like these little tokens you may see here as well. A subtler token in general, like say during the Civil War, looked like a penny kind. Of, but had the name of the business on it now they go back farther than that you might see them during the hard times era hard times tokens 1830s and the whole works as well now some of the tokens the round tokens may be paper like these here not all of them are worth great money but they're not all going to be tied to the military as you see here many of these have nothing to do with military in general they're basically like coupons and that's why even the military ones can get mixed up with some of these here but anyway that's what i have for you today well there we have it hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends The car with the brain. The car you program yourself to go where you want, do what you want. Yours is going around the table. It's program to come out again. Amaze Amatix, Chevrolet Astrovet, Buick Century Cruiser, Chrysler Charger, and Ford Mark IV. Amaze Amatix from Hasbro.